Hello everybody, Sunday Adelaja here. I want to continue my teaching on uh, uh, African people and black people. So the question is, are black African people cursed? Nope. <laughs> if they are cursed, they will not be ruling the world and if they are cursed, they will not become uh, uh, the popes of, and uh, the leaders and the fathers of the church. So let's go ahead and look into this uh, teaching today and you will see that African people are not just not cursed but they were they gave us the Christianity that we have today as we see it and these are Africans so let's go ahead and have a look so African fathers of the church that is the topic of today Africans were not only pioneers who gave start to the development of Christianity remember when this, we are talking here uh, we did the Arabs had not taken over North Africa. They had not taken over uh, Egypt, Morocco, and thing, people like that. So there were just African people there. Of course, a lot of them have come from Roman Empire and Persia, and you know it's just a mixture of African people. But they were not Muslims and they were not Arabs. So Africans were only they were not only pioneers who gave start to the development of Christianity. They also became fathers and teachers of the church and had historical influence on Christianity and the world at large. Tertullian is the most important, or well, at least one of the most known fathers of the church. Tertullian was the founder of Western theology. This man, he was from Africa and is the one that is the first, he was the first theology of Christianity and he gave birth to, Christ, the, the, to the study of the scripture and into theology that we are doing today. So whenever you hear about theology or study the Bible, everybody owns it to this African man, Tertullian. African uh, Quintus Septimus Florence Tertulliano, Tertullianus, known as Tertullian, was one of the most prolific early Christian authors, scholars, and apolog ap apologists. The author of 40 treatises, that is like books, of which 31 have survived. In Imagine Theology, Tertullian was the first to express the concept of Trinity. He gave start to Latin patristic and Church Latin, the language of medieval Western thought. Because, so he gave birth to that Latin writing and speaking that it, it was the, I mean, Latin was the language of the Western civilization. And he gave birth to the church language to the church language of latin to the christian language to the christian latin and that christian latin was what was being used to rule the whole of western europe for a very long time tertullian was born in a fa family of a consular centurion centurion in Carthage, north africa uh, presently present day tunisia in rome he studied ret rhetoric and philosophy and later law. In the 19th century, Tertullian was fully reborn as one of the most important Latin authors of uh, his time and a key figure in the formation of Western civilization and Christianity. He is called the founder of Western theology. In theology, he was interested in aspects not so much metaphysical as practical and legal. And that's what we need to go back to in Africa right now. Famous words like I believe because it is, I believe because it is absurd, it is undeniable because it is impossible, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church, Christians are made not born, belong to him. As you may have seen, this African had a fundamental influence on Christian theology and it is very important that this was not some doctrine detached from earthly life, but the one that could help people apply divine truths in their daily lives. Then there is another person that also was a father of the church, uh, Cyprian, or Cyprian, some people call him, uh, Cyprian of Carthage also. Cyprian, the author of canonical teachings on the unity of the church and its structure, is another father of the church. African man uh, Cyprian of Carthage was a bishop of Carthage and skilled in Latin theology. 
uh, whose main essays were devoted to understanding the issues of apostasy and splits in the church division. He is the creator of a uh, canonical teaching on the unity of the church and its hierarchical structure. Colin Tertullian, his teacher, Suprian, spent three local convocations in Carthage, uh, during which his judgment, if the church is not your mother, God is not your father, prevailed. So it is Suprian that came up with that statement, that if the church is not your mother, God is not your father. Cyprian was born into a wealthy family in North Africa, presumably a cottage. He was raised in a pagan environment and until 246 AD was known as a successful lawyer. His real name was uh, Th Tastius, but he took the additional name uh, Cassilius in memory of the priest whom he owned his conversion to. In conversion, his conversion was also influenced by the work of Tertullian. After becoming a Christian, he gave away most of his possessions. Two years after his baptism, at the quest of the uh, congregation, he was elected a bishop, which <laughs> violated the established rules. So sweet was his spiritual growth. His reputation was so great that churches of Gaul and Spain treated him as a chief judge. During perse persecutions of Emperor Valerian I, uh, Cyprian was summoned to proconsul Aspasius Paternus. There, he refused to make a sacrifice to pagan deities and stoutly professed Christ. As a result, he was exiled. The following year, the persecution intensified. Cyprian again appeared in court and was sentenced to execution. His only answer was, thanks be to God. Wow. When they said they should kill him, the judge had said it, the decision has been taken, it's a glory to God. Thanks be to God. He was the first African bishop to accept martyrdom and was regarded as one of the fathers of the church, of the one church, when the church was not divided between, you know, different, when it was just one church. Churches were later erected at the place of his execution. He was killed. And he was saying, just thank God. This statement belongs to Cyprian. Whatever a man prefers to God, that he makes a God to himself. Wow. And that's what I teach today. The Roman Catholic Church celebrates his feast the same day as his good friends, Pope Cornelius. On September 16, Anglicans celebrate him on September 13 to 15 or 15. A surviving sermon of St. Augustine, oh, sorry, okay, yeah, Augustine made on the day of Cyprian's feet points out that Cyprian celebrations were widespread throughout Africa already by the 4th century. So people were already celebrating him and remembering his death even during the times of Augustine because Augustine is another father of the church. Of the church. Thus, we can see the importance of this African. Sometimes people say, how can an African teach us to believe in God? While forgetting that Africans were the fathers of the Christian church. Augustine is another one. Augustine, the father of theology of the Protestant Reformation. So he is the one that is the father of the Protestant Reformation theology. African blessed, uh, blessed or Saint Augustine Aurelius was a Christian theologian and philosopher, influential preacher, bishop of Ipo Regius, one of the most important fathers of the Christian church in Western Christianity, the founder of Augustinianism and the father of Christian philosophy of history. August, Augustine was born in the African province of Numidia in Tagast, present-day Algeria, his primary education he owes to his mother, Christian Saint Monica, a smart, noble, devout most, uh, woman. When we, I say it's modern day Algeria, for example, people say, oh, they, are they Muslims? Are they Arabs? No, no. This was before the arrival of Arabs. But of course, there has been a mixture. I've told you in one of my teachings that there's been a mixture of all different nationalities there with Africans that were there originally. His mother, Monica, was a barber 
from a native family from North Africa. Baba is not a Baba that's cut your hair. He's talking about people who are mixed over there, the Africans and the you know, Romans and the, you know, uh, all the people, the mixture of people that are living in North Africa. That's what they call Baba. Augustine Christian Neoplatonism dominated in Western European philosophy and uh, Catholic theology until the 13th century. He had a huge influence on Martin Luther. Augustine left numerous essays that had significant influence on the anthropological side of teaching in Protestantism. Luther and Calvin, many Protestants consider him to be the father of theology of the Protestantism. Protestant Reformation because of his teachings on salvation and God's grace. He is now considered the most important teacher of the church. Augustine's teachings had a decisive influence on Thomas Aquinas, revered by the Catholic Church as the most important teacher of the church. Hmm. His best known works are theological philosophical work, The City of God and Confessions, he is venerated as a saint by the Roman Catholic, Anglicans, and the Orthodox churches. There is no better proof of friendship than to help our friends, than to help our friends with their burdens. These are the words of Saint Augustine. His feast, his feast day in the Catholic Church is on August 28th, and in the Russian Orthodox Church, June 15 to or 18 or, to, or 28. In his autobiography, Pope Benedict XVI stated that Augustine had the most powerful influence on his, teach, on his thinking. The influence of Protestantism for which Augustine became an inspiration on the European civilization was briefly mentioned earlier. More details can be learned from my book here, How to Transform and Build a Civilized Nation. All right, that will be the end for today. Please let's go share this message. Share, share, share. And I will see the video after that. Uh, but before then, let's if you want to go and join my mentorship program, just go to my blog, sundayatelajablog.com slash mentorship. If you want to come for the East to Makers training, go to sundayatelajablog.com slash East to Makers training. Or HMT, it's called HMT slash HMT. If you want to go to Africa with us to change and build a better Africa, go to my blog there too. It's just slash Nigeria. So it's sundayatelajablog.com slash Nigeria. If you want to get the books, go there as well. sundayatelajablog.com slash books. And um, so thank you so much. We'll go ahead and watch the video now. And after the video, uh, we, you know, we'll come back tomorrow to continue the topic. Peace. During that time of Roman dominance, Africans hold high military and administrative posts in the empire. The Romans and the Greeks had no color prejudice comparable to the kind of prejudice we would know later on. Otherwise, why would three Africans become emperors of Rome? Why would there be three African popes? Finally, Constantine decided to make Christianity the religion of the whole of the Roman Empire. Now we're coming to the critical period when the Roman domination of the church so corrupted the church, the Africans began some disenchantment with the Roman interpretation of Christianity. Constantine calls a council of bishops and priests at a place called Nice, it's the Nicene Conference. It is at this conference that the European created a European concept of Christianity. It was at this conference that they began to take the African saints out of the literature of Christianity. Now the corruption had started.
none then, Constantine decided to make Christianity the religion of the whole of the Roman Empire. Now we're coming to the critical period when the Roman domination of the church so corrupted the church. The Africans began some disenchantment with the Roman interpretation of Christianity. Constantine calls a council of bishops and priests at a place called Nice, it's the Nicene Conference. It is at this conference that the European created a European concept of Christianity. It was at this conference that they began to take the African saints out of the literature of Christianity. Now the corruption had started. It was at this conference that they began to take the African saints out of the literature of Christianity. Now the corruption had started. Constantine decided to make Christianity the religion of the whole of the Roman Empire. Now we're coming to the critical period when the Roman domination of the church so corrupted the church. The Africans began some disenchantment with the Roman interpretation of Christianity. Constantine calls a council of bishops and priests at a place called Nice, it's the Nicene Conference. It is at this conference that the European created a European concept of Christianity. Finally, Constantine decided to make Christianity the religion of the whole of the Roman Empire. Now we're coming to the critical period when the Roman domination of the church so corrupted the church. The Africans began some disenchantment with the Roman interpretation of Christianity. Constantine calls a council of bishops and priests at a place called Nice. They began 
began to take the African saints out of the literature of Christianity. Now the corruption had started.